Hey, C here, and this is Vampire the Masquerade Heartless Lullaby. This is a game I found of on itch uh, that was part of the Vampire the Masquerade game jam that was. I don't remember, a couple of years ago, I think, and uh, most of them were just visual novels. And I, I chose this game because it wasn't a visual novel. Nothing wrong with visual novels, I just sometimes don't want to read. <laughs> so, let me lower the music real quick. Now watch it be another visual novel and I'm completely wrong. I mean, I'm still gonna play it if it is, but we'll see. Heartless Club, 4.30 a.m. Mm -hmm. I did remember correctly that it, it wasn't... Yeah, it looked really cool. Our character is Zack Riley, a young man in his late twenties, parting with his college buddy, Johnny. You stand in the queue that gives access to fairly new and trendy nightclub, The Heartless. Johnny is not feeling very well, he is hunched behind us, staggering slightly with a blank stare. Hmm, Johnny, are you okay? Are you sure you wanna keep the party going, stud? Trying to focus his gaze and blinking eff effusively. Of course, you bastard! He shouts as he raises the half empty beer bottle in his hand. This has to be a big night. We have to get in now wherever we can. Before Johnny finishes his sentence, you hear a loud snort behind you. As you turn around, you notice how the bouncer starts to cross his arms and frown. Get the hell out of here, fucking drunk! He shouts grimly. Uh, press tab. Oh, interesting. So this is like a point and click? Nice. Zack's inner voice. There's no point in trying to get in an, into another joint at this hour and certainly not with Johnny in this state. We're leaving. When you turn around with the intention of leaving the queue, Johnny's face twists into a pitiful grimace. No, man, it's a... Sorry, I, it's in the thing. Uh, our big night! Stumbling Johnny tries to block your way. I'm not moving. You idiot. If I leave him alone, he'll end up in the ICU. One drink, Johnny. One. And then we're leaving. You idiot. Okay, I do still want to examine this. The front page is full of news about the multiple cases of missing persons. Excuse me, you didn't give me time to read. Can I? Is there a... Is there a... Um, ooh, physical, social and mental. So, I am... Uh, I am very charismatic, apparently. What's Resolve? I've never heard of Resolve. Or at least not in the... <laughs> the only thing... Okay. The only game that I played is Vampire the Masquerade Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines and I'm I can't wait for Bloodlines 2 to come out and for oh what's it called the one that is like a telltale adventure game it's not telltale but it's like uh it's like that with the three protagonists and I can't wait. I love those kinds of games and I love Vampire the Masquerade so I'm I'm gonna love that one <laughs> but I haven't played as much as I really want to I haven't played the board game the you know the um, the RPG tabletop RPG that in the world of darkness I would love to but I've never played so I don't know if these, like Composure and Resolve, I've never heard of them because they're not in Bloodlines. Uh, but apparently we are not very intelligent. If you wanna puke... Oh, look at him. I hate Johnny. <laughs> Can't wait to teach him as soon as I'm a vampire. Ew! 
taking hold of Johnny by his arm, you take a couple of steps backwards. Come on, man, let's go. Turning around, suddenly your attention is completely captivated by the most beautiful eyes you have ever seen. A woman, tall and slender, oh, I was expecting a man. Like, it's vampires. Vampires are gay. Well, I guess vampires are gay, I'm still not a vampire. So that's fair. Uh, a woman, tall and slender, absolutely perfect, hair dyed red and tied in two buttons. Bright green eyes and smooth ivory skin walks towards the entrance. As she reaches your side, you feel the world grind to a halt. As she slowly looks down and stares directly at you, a warm half smile on her face pierces your soul. It seemed like she went right in without even noticing me, but okay. She can't be real, right? Lifting her face again, the woman continues on her way past the bouncer. He greets her with a quick nod of his head, and her perfect, fi perfect figure disappears amidst the noise of the nightclub. What was that? You have seen a lot of other women in your line, but never some like her. Still numb, paralyzed by the experience, you feel trapped in your own mind, struggling to superimpose reason on whatever it is that is asking you to break through until you find her. I need to get into that club, whatever it takes. Johnny? Johnny's still by your side, of course, but right now is the least of your problems. If you had to leave him lying right there to get in, lying on his own puke, you will do it in a heartbeat, honestly. I mean, look at him. I'm not that drunk, am I? They didn't spike my last drink, right? No, no way. An insistent buzzing sound brings you out of your reverie. Zuck, dude, Zuck. The world slips slowly and heavily from his lips. Are you alright, Zuck? Very pale, Zuck. Zuck, you're not well, Zuck. Your name begins to sound strange, repeated so many times by someone in such a state of dispossession. Uh, I don't want to be rude to my friend. I, yeah, I don't want Zach to be like that. <laughs> Johnny, you just saw that woman too, didn't you? Johnny's face twists into a grimace of confusion. Dude? By the time you, re you realize that Johnny's voice sounds far away, you realize that you are walking toward the entrance of the club. You see the bouncer's arm go up and you close your eyes in anticipation. From the bouncer's walkie-talkie, a static wrapped message finds a way to you. Let them through, Victor. It really is a special night. Of course, sir. Returning the device to the holster on his belt, Victor, the mantle of Masco, the muscle that until now had blocked your entrance points at you with his index finger. You, you can come in, your friend too. If you don't behave there will be no warnings, understood? Miracles do happen at 4.35 uh, in the morning. Yes, Johnny come on, the last one's on me. Huh. So but it basically is a visual novel in the end, it's just I do enjoy the fact that it's more than just a visual novel, that at least it's not just the reading, it's, uh, you know, there is the point and click aspect of it as well. Can you go faster, first of all? Oh, what's you? What, what's you? What's this? A couple piece of paper on the floor seems to have found its place among all the filth and trash decorating the dance floor. Does it have something written on it? Let's see. Of course I'm gonna see it. Unfolding it, you realize that it is an attempt at a poem, handwritten and crudely written. The author clearly doesn't know how to rhyme, although his intentions and feelings are clear from the first line. Ugh, it's embarrassing. What the hell nowadays is so intense? Before you, a couple converses quietly, blocking the exit to the terrace, with regal bearing and elegant attire that don't look like the usual clientele. Okay, that's way too much narration. I'm gonna skip it. What do you want, keep it, kiddo? The world slid there slowly and ven venomously, sending a shiver up and down your spine. Uh, just, uh, uh sure. 
I wanted to be a pushover. Excuse, I just wanted to go out to the terrace for a moment. Don't be like that, she says, stopping her knuckles on her partner's shoulder. So there are Ventures, I'm pretty sure they're called. I don't remember, because I get them confused. I think they are Ventures. The Ventures are the business vampires. Yeah, 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 it's her. Oh my god, look at that. That's way too much. <laughs> Talk to her, you moron. Don't just stand there staring at her. A shy, stylish smile begins to form on the woman's face. Come, sit down. If you keep looking at me like that from a distance, you're going to make me feel uncomfortable. Yep, okay. Now I'm sitting and I'm talking to her. Okay, talk to her, coward. It's just so... <laughs> okay. So sorry, I saw you at the entrance. I feel like he, like this will be endearing to a vampire, you know, like, oh, you sweet old thing, or rather, young thing. Um, it was not my, maybe, making you feel uncomfortable is the last thing I will want to make you feel tonight. Yeah, no, I'm not that cool. Um, let's go with this. I want. I don't like Zack. <laughs> Honestly, I don't know what it is about him. I don't like him. So I feel like I want him to be a pushover. I want him to be kind of humiliated. <laughs> I don't know. You feel the words escaping from your mouth in gushes without order of concert. I, and I was thinking about. I don't know. By by a drink. Start by asking me my name. Don't tell me yours. Let's start like this, shall we? When did you become this dumb, Zack? Fuck. Uh, excuse me. My name is Zack. Uh, Zack Riley. Diane. Just Diane. If you want my last name, you'll have to give me something more, Zack Riley. Your smile is absolutely intoxicating, and you feel like you could get lost all night long in a immense eyes. And tell me, Zack, why are you and your friend here at this ungodly hour? Your friend, if you hadn't just been reminded, you would have completely forgotten that Johnny is still at the bar, battling an alcoholic coma and love sickness. Love sickness? Hmm. Oh, okay. There we go. That's why. My friend is going through a rough patch. It. I don't know why I emphasized friend that much. Uh, he just left his wife, and he needed a boy's night out, and I couldn't let him down as well. And is this the, uh, the first time you've arrived? Was in the night at the Heartless? Uh, yes, I thought we were not going to be able to get in. The bouncer almost kicked us out, but in the end, here we are. Uninvited and without knowing anyone in sight. Diane's face momentarily dims. Oh, uh, yeah, uh, we got lucky. Lucky is a very big word, Zack Riley. Take care of your friend, don't let him run out of it. R right. Will you be around much longer? I'll still be around for when you come back, brave one. Don't worry. Cool. I'll see you later then. There we go. Hey, Johnny, come on. Let's wet out all the booze you've been drinking. Of course. With astonishing agility for someone in his current state, Johnny dashes to death. <laughs> I love it. It's so bad. Johnny dashes to the dance floor and you both begin to sway to the decadent beat of the music. Honestly, I am playing this right after I played Angerfoot from last week's one-off. After all the dancing and that and, uh, you know, the contrasting <laughs> levels of skill in dancing between the goons in that game, this is just fantastic going back like this is bad of course but it's vampire the masquerade kind of bad bloodlines kind of bad and i'm loving it oh i'm diane and i have a hunger bar nice your name is diane your surname you burned the night your surname you burned, the night Gabriel embraced you into the Toreador clan. Of course, I'm a Toreador. Since then, you are a daughter of the night, and thanks to your sire's position, an agent of the Camarilla. 
the sect that unites all kindred to seek their, to remain hidden from human eyes. Tonight your orders are clear. Negotiate with Jackson Cunningham, regent of the Heartless, his adherence to the Camarilla. The time of the anarchists has come to an end, and after the second convention of Prague, the position of the Camarilla is clear. All who are not with us are your are our enemies. Are these the same things? No, they're not the same things. Because uh, manipulation I mean, kind of. They're mostly the same attributes. Oh, but we also have disciplines. Okay, we'll get there in a second. Um, so composure is... Uh, intelligence, for example, is two instead of one. So you are smart enough to realize your limitations. Wits is three instead of two. So you can analyze a situation and quickly work out the best escape route and resolve is one instead of two. You have minimal attention for all but the most pressing things. So let's see my disciplines. What are these? Does this mean that I am level two or that I'm not? I have presence level at level two. Okay, yeah. Can you just, can you use celerity? No, you don't have it, but like, come on. <laughs> You're so slow. Oh, we could go to the terrace. Oh, what's happened here? Huh. I, I mean, I didn't need aspect, aspects for <laughs> to see that, but okay. A faint, almost imperceptible trail of blood. Something or someone has been dragged along the floor while bleeding. The trace comes from inside the cloakroom, but someone has gone to great lengths to try to raise it. No one needs to know. Tell me, what I will see tonight? Does it work? Success! Nice! As your eyes glow slightly pink, you feel the barmaid's knees weaken at your words, charged with the innate power of the Clan of the Rose. Tonight, uh, tonight some new clients came in, strangers, and we've seen them before. We didn't use the door, suddenly they were in inside. Someone must have snuck them in, and they scare me, miss. Describe them to me. They are a man and a woman, they are dressed in suits, black. They are like you, miss. There's no one like me, girl. Remember that. Thanks for everything. Uh, well, I guess like you means vampire, but is that the cloakroom? It should be at the beginning, right? Yeah. Locked, of course it is. Have we met before? Not directly, no. We don't, we don't hang out in the same joints as you. And yet here you are. In your head, that sentence sounded much more confident. After you say it, you feel a tremor at the back of your throat. It's been a long time since a presence has disturbed you like this. Check it out, she's not only pretty, she's smart too. Here we are, yes. And we're not planning to leave anytime soon. Are you sure you don't want to sit down, beautiful? No. The arrogance of the venture, the elegance of the Toreador, the eeriness of the Tremere. Uh, yes, the Tremere. I did kind of think of the Tremere, but they look like ventures. Maybe I'm stereotyping. <laughs> um, definitely not Toreador. Not if not for anything else, just because she said that uh, you know how quickly Toriador get anxious at your sight, but maybe there are two different clans, so she might be Toriador and he isn't. I could try to remove the boards and see what's inside. Yeah, of course. Success. With a violent snap, the weak wooden planks succumb to your supernatural strength. How uncivilized. Well, I had to get in somehow. Let's see, what happened here? It's turned upside down, clear signs of a fight. On the desk, a pool of blood drips onto the floor. Poor girl. Okay, let's find out where Johnny is. Flickering light coming from the carriage can catches your attention. 
It's Johnny's cell phone and his wallet. What's this idiot doing? I mean, get it. Why are you... Get it. <laughs> are you just leaving it on the floor? Have you seen my friend? Yes, your drunk friend is upstairs at the express invitation of the boss. And couldn't you let me through, man? My body's really fucked up. I gotta take him home. No way, without an invitation, no one passes through here. You will notice that her wrist is bandaged. It looks like a recent cure. Her eyes convey a confused, tired sadness. I'm sorry, I know it's none of my business, but is this yours? The description of the young sweetheart fits you. Oh, that. The third idiot, excuse me, can I tell you something? I'm all ears. See that bouncer over there? The one in front of the stairs leading to the VIP zone? Yep, don't tell me that gorilla has. Yes, he robbed me this, but he didn't have the courage to give it to me. The coward, I saw him approach my stall at the beginning of the evening with something in his hand, but he turned away before he got here, and since then he hasn't come near me even to say hello. Are you dating? N no, I mean nothing serious. Well, not at all. Yes, but no, it's complicated. Gathering your courage, you approach the table before you can open your mouth. All three turn at the same time in your direction. The man in suit twists his face, clearly annoyed. You, can't you see that the grown-ups are talking? Christoph, isn't it? The man in the suit looks at you in astonishment, and out of the corner of your eye, you can see the anger going inside him. Something tells you he's not used to being ignored. Who's asking? You feel the eyes of the three piercing, piercing you like spears, pinning you to the spot. Your heart begins to pound and you feel your throat constrict, making it hard to breathe. My name is Zack, Zack Riley. I can't find my friend and... The woman lets out a burst of laughter, cutting her off. Christoph! The man you call to find your uh, the man you call to find your lost friends. What? The student man joins in the laughter of his companion. Please speak, Zach Riley. The waitress told me that you will know that Johnny, my friend, has been taken to the VIP zone. He's very drunk. I have to take him home. Upstairs, you said, to the VIP zone. What's the matter, Chris? Can't go to his home? Well, Cunningham doesn't tell you things anymore, huh? Silence. Tonight is a very special night, honey. Your friend has been honored to be invited to the celebration. I have no doubt we will be having the time of his life. I'm sure you're dying to go out too, aren't you? I just want to pick up Johnny and go home. It's been a long night. We've had too much to drink. Um, enough. Enough, both of you. How squeamish, Christoph. Yes, we haven't done anything to him yet. Heaven for a friend. Uh yeah, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna say that. He's a pushover, but for his friend, maybe he'll gather the courage. No, this was not what we had agreed upon. Whatever you say, Mr. Vines. Whatever you say. We're not going to go into your field and shit in the corners, are we? No, of course not. We wouldn't dare. Well, maybe just a little shit. I'm just under a small vine. What the fuck are you talking about? What the fuck, Johnny? Fuck. Take this handkerchief. Zach Riley, give it to the waitress. It will be indication enough for her to bring us another bottle. Now get out of here. Christoph gave me this. He told me you wouldn't know what to do. Bring them a bottle or something. Good luck and good night, Riley. Can I go behind there now? Aha, uh -huh, that's what we're doing. Yes, of course. I have to. It's the only way.
Yep, in and out, quick and easy, nice and easy. But yeah, I'll leave you with this cliffhanger for now. We don't know what's gonna happen to Johnny, but it sounds like he's in trouble. And we're very close to meeting him again and maybe rescuing him. I don't know. But I'll let you see what happens next. If you want to play this game, it's on itch. Uh, it is free. So no reason not to try it out. I did really enjoy this, but this is a really cool game. So I'm excited to play more, but I'm gonna play more just on my own because again, way too much reading. <laughs> so I just want to read it for myself instead of recording it. But I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments what you thought about it and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.